Illumination, and I want to welcome you today. I'm really excited because I have a wonderful guest, and I wanted to first of all tell you a little bit about um, Project Illumination, but before I even do that, I want to say hi to Sally Arkel-Bowles. Hi, Dana. Thank you for having me on today. I'm, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm going to tell them a little bit about you in just a minute. But first, I want to say welcome to Project Illumination, because this is my first interview on my new podcast. And um, I'm the author of a book called The Illuminated Workplace. But I really believe we can bring illumination to the world. It isn't just the workplace. And so I've been a speaker in business audiences all over the United States and Canada. And I recently was on a um, international call with other leaders and Sally and I met and we just sort of resonated with one another. And so I invited her to be on my first podcast. And so uh, Sally, I'm really glad you're here. And I'm going to tell them a little bit about what I, I've learned about you. I'm going to read you read a few things about you and then you can tell us a little bit more about how you've done all the remarkable things you've done. Oh, so you. Sally was, um, her goal is to help others transform their lives through pa the power of the mind. She believes if we understand how the mind works, we can change our perception of the world and create the results we desire. Mm -hmm. Sally has developed a very diverse leadership background, including a lot of experience. She was the director with an international organization she was a managing partner in financial services. She is now an entrepreneur and an international speaker and author. It was in 2020 that Sally left her corporate career to partner with professionals in businesses and opera, uh, entrepreneurs as a high performance leadership coach and mentor. And she works with people both in personal and professional development. And, and I wanna talk a little more about that Sally, when we get into our conversation mm -hmm. about Absolutely. the difference and really actually the sameness of personal and professional mm -hmm. uh, consulting. But she's committed to empowering people through career evolution and their disruptions any or any obstacles on their path. And so all ages, really. And Sally, I am so impressed with what you've done. Or is there anything you want to add to that before we start our conversation? No, I appreciate you sharing that. And it, it's just a pleasure for me to be the first guest on your podcast, your new podcast, because I think, you know, when we did meet a while ago, it was just an instant connection and, and lots yes. of great energy spread amongst us, but also the like mindset. So I'm really looking forward to our conversation today. Thank you. And I'm going to add that um, this is actually an international call between you and me mm -hmm. because I'm in Seattle, Washington in the United States and Sally's in the Vancouver, BC area, which is um, obviously in Canada. And, but although we're in two different countries, we're both on the Pacific side of the uh, ocean um, or the, our countries. So we're really only about three hours away if we yes. drove in the car across the border. In fact, I've spoken in at different events in Vancouver, BC. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. And, but you're out, you're a little outside the city, but. Yeah. In the, in Close that. enough, I can be there anytime you come to visit. Okay, well, that's <laughs> that'd be great to meet in person. I, know. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have good friends now all over the world, and yes. we've never met in person. It's through Zoom calls, mm -hmm. but you feel like you have. I know, I'm, I'm the same way, and I love that the globe is so small. Yes, I'm yes. Today with technology, because I think that's one of the things that really enhances us. Yes, uh, both as personal and professionals, because it, it's just so amazing to, for me, it's it's really enlightening to see the commonalities amongst all the different people. Yes. And Isn't I love that it. amazing? Mm -hmm. That was something I used to discover when I traveled internationally and it didn't matter if they spoke different languages. It didn't matter where we were. There's so much that people have in common. And mm -hmm. that's really part of my mission, too, is to help people see what we have in common how much we're alike rather than always focusing on differences and right mm -hmm. now the world it seems is so focused on victims and blaming and self-righteousness and mm -hmm. and being divided so i think work like yours and mine 
can help shine light on that and help bring a little more light and love. But one of the first things I wanted to ask you is what gave you the courage to leave such a professional um, career when you were, um, you know, doing so well and probably could have continued doing well? How did that all come about? Well, it came about with a decision we made as a family because my husband was always working out of town. He was traveling quite a bit with business. Uh, he's in the airline industry. And our son had gone to university. And so all three of us were living in different places in the country. <laughs> and it came to a point because I had a very good job um, as we were raising our son to, but was a bricks and mortar, right? I was in an office uh, in a particular destination. And it just didn't make sense for us to be apart all the time. And mm -hmm. so I, my husband had an opportunity to get a, an offer for a 10 year position. So we decided to have me move out there with him. And luckily my company gave me an opportunity for about six months to work remotely before remote was a thing. And yeah. I, I got, took up that opportunity as we were, you know, the company was restructuring at the time. Um, but it was really about just getting back to having family, right? Being with the mm -hmm. family again and being a couple mm -hmm. as my husband and I, um, and knowing that our son was was fine out in university. And then yes. it came to a point where um, during that six months, the, the company decided to restructure. They brought a new president. All of a sudden, everything started to change, and they were restructuring all the different people within the organization. So I actually um, went through a period of time where I was feeling really unsure on what my role was going to be because everything was changing. And it was almost like I was a little... Um, desperate to find out what are, where are they going to put me? What are they going to do with me? How am I, how, where, what, how am I going to survive? What am I going to do? Because I was a very high income earner and high performer. And after a little while, I recognized what they were coming forward with didn't suit me at all. It was really undervaluing me. And at one point, I just decided I was going to call my senior VP and suggest that we end this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you that the, having taken back that control of that decision and not being dependent on somebody else, using you as a pawn to put you somewhere that you probably weren't going to be used properly anyways, was one of the major decisions for me. And it was just a, with such ease that I was able to make that call and have that decision. And then the outcome turned out much better than I ever thought it would be. Wow. Well, you know, your story is very similar, although each one is unique, but it's people like you that have discovered <clears throat> their self-worth is mm -hmm. more than what the company sees. And and it often takes courage. In fact, some people are, I talk to people that have lost their jobs and that's really can mm -hmm. be deflating because we have our identity so much wrapped up yes. in, our, in our job. And so people are afraid to leave. So I admire that you did that. You were able to to um, ask for what you wanted and leave mm -hmm. on terms that were probably a little easier than some people go through. Yes. But it still takes courage to mm -hmm. become an entrepreneur on your own. And so mm -hmm. um, because this goes, our my podcasts on Project Illumination are not just about the workplace. I want to focus a lot of what we talk about on all relationships yes. because Project Elimination, the goals are to uh, rebuild relationships mm -hmm. in the workplace and the world. And so um, the first step, I think, is to know, know our own worth. And that's what you just described. Mm -hmm. would, would you, um, in your coaching and, and in your experiences, what are some of the things that you talk to people about to do with um, how to empower themselves and not be a victim like you just described mm -hmm. you did? Yeah, I think one of the first things I've recognized is that, especially in today's economy, there's a lot of um, un uncertainty, mm -hmm. right? A lot of uncertainty. And people are hearing all of the, the news about the economy, about the, you know, the politics that are happening, about what's happening in the globe. And I think that that uncertainty is really affecting a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I know, as I work with individuals, when I can get them to really be focused on what it is that they're wanting to achieve, most mm -hmm. people have lost sense of their purpose. 
-hmm. and really need to be re-engaged with why they're on this earth to begin with yeah and when they do it opens up so many more opportunities and doors and light for them and it gives them that energy to be able to move forward and say yeah I do have a bigger purpose, whether it's in their career, whether it's with legacy with their family, whether it's community or whether it's globally, they start to understand that there is so much more to life than they've mm -hmm. been currently spinning their wheels around. And yeah. they've been getting pulled out of what their true um, worth is also in what their true purpose is. Yeah. And to me, that's so sad to oh, see oh. that they've lost sense of that because we get so busy in raising our children, having our, our family marriages, looking after the households, you know, making sure everybody else is, is happy around us, but we are just doing these tasks over and over again, but not with the love and the light and the passion that we really would love to have in our life. And people are frustrated, they're bored, they're disappointed in themselves. Yes. For not being, not living their life the way they pictured it would be. So, so true. When you have coaching clients, mm -hmm. um, did they describe some of the obstacles or some of the fears that they have? You just mentioned the uncertainty. And I've noticed that that when I ask audiences, what's their greatest fear? They say the unknown or uncertainty. Do you, do you have any advice for people who feel that way? Or do yeah, you absolutely come up? Yeah, I mean, uncertainty is a is a big factor today. Um, and I see a lot of people are just really afraid, afraid of lack, mm -hmm. what the future holds, right? Yeah, it's, it's really lack at the end of the day. Yes. Um, but the worry, fear and doubt is getting stronger and stronger in our mm -hmm. society. And mm -hmm. so I, I really think that as an individual, if you truly want to be able to get back in tune with who you really are and to have something that's going to motivate you to be able to move forward in a way that's going to make you fulfill, feel fulfill, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's about right. getting back in tune with what's your greater, greater purpose. And so I have different techniques that I use to help them. Number one, put together, you know, probably a really big goal. I call it the worthy goal because it's bigger than they can even understand how to get there. But there's only growth in a goal like that. There's not growth in a goal that just keeps you where you're going or to keep you, you know, working yeah. towards something you've already done before. And when we do that, it opens up what their true purpose is and what legacy they want to leave for their family or their children or their grandchildren or society, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is the, yeah. the mark you want to leave on this world? And so and that to me is what I love about yeah. what I get to do. Yes, and you're describing uh, the process of opening up to the imagination mm -hmm. instead of always controlling everything and thinking you have to do what you've done before and if you just keep working harder and do the same thing, things yeah. are going to get met better and, mm -hmm. and being afraid to face the unknown. Yeah. The unknown, I always tell people, um, the future is where the only thing only place things can happen and if it's already what you know then it's not going to be new but if you want something new you yeah. have to let go of the control and Absolutely. i i'm sure you practice that yourself for me it means being mm -hmm. present yes each day and um in fact i even had mentioned to you one time i was feeling overwhelmed and then i have to remind myself one day at a time and mm -hmm. And uh, I have choices every day. And I think too often we get overwhelmed thinking mm -hmm. so much we have to do. And um, it, it's true. There's lots to do, but we can only do it one, one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I call it unification with the soul, the deep soul. And you, and you're talking about finding your deepest self, your, your self word. Mm -hmm. And so do you get, could you give me some practical ways or what um, people might have described to you that has happened to them? Sure, absolutely. Um, I have a, a client who has been in nursing her whole career and she came to me over a year ago because she was sick and tired of being sick and tired, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And she's, look, she's single, uh, she's divorced, she's 
now taking full custody of her grandson, who I believe at the time was like two or three when she took full custody of him, and he's now about eight, um, and close to retirement, and really trying to figure out, you know, is this all there is for me? Yeah. Is this all there is? And she's been giving up herself, being a nurse her whole life, <laughs> to everybody else. Yes. And I could tell, and she knew it, that she had just been zapped of all of her energy and that there really didn't seem to be a light at the end of the tunnel. And in working with her as a professional woman, <laughs> you know, she'd always had a high standard for herself, but she absolutely had a beautiful vision that she wanted to create and her vision is just magnificent and it's wanting to work with people that have experienced extreme trauma in their life because she used to be um, showing up with the police whenever somebody had had a horrible situation happen in their home and there was often death or things along that type of line and she'd be there to work with those trauma as they they're happening or have just happened and so she has a deep desire to create this beautiful trauma um, center that is really, we call it the wellness center, not a trauma center, yeah. um, because we want to talk into what we want to do for people, right. not talk what we don't want. And at the same time, she wants to bring in all the up, up and coming modalities of treatment, not just focusing on you know the medical terms and that kind of thing, but bringing the light and the love and the energy and the different people that are out there globally to the center. Wow. So as soon as we were able to get to that part, all of a sudden she lit up. She understood there was a bigger purpose for her. She understood what she could do differently. And so a lot of that development now for her is to keep her focused on what it is that that end goal looks like. Wow. Because that end goal is going to be absolutely fabulous. And the people, the opportunities, the money, everything is starting to show up wow. because she has made a committed decision that now she's engaged emotionally with having this bigger purpose. That and to beautiful. me, I just feel so blessed that I get to be part of that journey alongside her. Yes. And, and what you just described is a beautiful story. And She's got the experience from <clears throat> her life experiences of dealing with a lot of pain and suffering, mm -hmm. which I've worked a lot in healthcare too, too and a lot with nurses and doctors. Mm -hmm. And it is such an exhausting kind of work. Yeah. And to be able to take that and take her expertise is just, I can see where she'd be so inspired. And when we're inspired mm -hmm. in the spirit, mm -hmm. then we do our best work. Yes. So. That, that's yeah. wonderful. And I think the biggest thing is, is along the process of, you know, working toward this, there are so many times when you're going to come up against that fear, where you're going to say, is it possible? Is it not mm -hmm. possible? How yeah. would I do this? How will yeah. this happen for me? And having the guide along you side, a mentor or a guide like myself with you, allows us to come in and breathe that life back into you, bring you back yeah. on track, but also give you specific tools to help manage through those feelings or those situations, because we will come up against roadblocks. We will come up right. against our own self image mm -hmm. that tells right. us we're not worthy. We're not good enough. Um, you know, this worked, but you know, am I, re is this really going to happen? Will yeah. I really be able to make this happen? This is where we get to bring our expertise in to right. be able to help guide them on that path to having yeah. the availability to a trusted resource to yeah. help them create that and to be able to be along their side and to help them with tools and ideas. Because right. I kind of think of it as a mastermind at the same time, because we're open to having those discussions about yes. all the nitty gritty, but also about, you know, how are we believing in our mind about what's possible? Yes. And, and what we say to ourselves ends up being how we feel. So until mm -hmm. we recognize what we're saying and, and how we want to create, you know, a new script for our life, a new plan, we're going to just keep falling back on old patterns. And that's what I see with a lot of my clients and myself. Um, mm -hmm. I Sometimes it takes uncovering those old patterns or even the shadow side 
that is causing us to think the way we do. But without a new vision, we just have a tendency to go into the fear, doubt, and worry. And and the new vision is what gives us strength. Um, mm -hmm. I, I can remember feeling uh, similarly uh, in my own career and floundering a bit. And But just by looking at my own experience and the, the background that I had, I was able to recognize how I had such inspiration for things that were much loftier than anything I was doing in my so-called careers and launched my consulting. And uh, it it's one of the, I was going to add about the uncertainty. One of the amazing things that happens is when you remove some of the um, fears and, and, and take off some of the filters of worry, it's amazing what suddenly comes to us. And I think we block him. I, I, in fact, that's what I, I think he is <laughs> when yes. we, we, uh, we're open and things can come to us and, mm -hmm. um, we're not, there's not a lot of static. So the energy comes to us. And I also believe we emanate that energy. Mm -hmm. And so people like you and I are trying to share those thoughts and ideas and methods. You have some, any other suggestions for, even if it's not the workplace, I, I, I get a lot of people. Well, I know what I really want to ask you when we're dealing with somebody's um, even if it's a, a professional development coaching, do you find that you end up talking more about them as a personal human being and their life than the actual reason they think they come to you? Yeah. Eventually it gets to that because at the, at the core, we're human. Yeah. Right at the core, we have feelings. At the yeah. core, we have thoughts. And so, if I can get them to understand the power of what we have inside, yeah. that's going to make a huge difference for the individual um, to be able to understand that it's more than just a business issue. Yes, all stems back to who you are, and yes. it all stems back to those paradigms we may have from yeah. whether it was through work or through childhood, wherever those paradigms have come from, but yeah. also to recognize there are specific tools and processes that you can use to recognize when they pop back up, but yeah. also how to rewrite the narrative. Yes. Right. Rewriting the narrative to me is yeah. one of the most powerful pieces. Yeah. It allows us to be able to move forward. And then another piece is the recognition. When you recognize that you have a pattern that keeps showing its ugly head, yes. that recognition is the start of the growth. Yes, it is. Because so, until you recognize, oh, I'm doing that same old script mm -hmm. and I'm expecting the same result that didn't happen and it's gonna, the same bad thing is probably yes. gonna come up any again anyway from that yes. same script. I tell, I, I speak to a lot of, and work with a lot of people that are in um, high stress jobs. Yes. And I remind them that the steady, the one steady thing you can count on is your own deep soul. Mm. It's going to have storms and ups and downs, but in our soul is where we can remain calm mm -hmm. and present. And so it doesn't matter what the topic is, wherever I am and whether I'm with individuals or groups, I still refer to um, unifying with our own soul. Mm -hmm. and that is our guiding course that's our true north that's how we keep going but if we have blocks and we can all use different languages patterns shadows old narr narratives mm -hmm. from the past um i i do a lot in my book i talk a lot about the ego and the ego has its own pathway and yeah. it plays a lot of roles it <laughs> and it's, and each of us we're the starring role in each of our own dramas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in order to change anything, if we don't want the drama to continue um, in the same way, we have to step off the stage, so to speak, mm -hmm. and find our, our true self. So do you have any other practical tools that you want to mention how we can do that? Sure. I mean, there's there's so many different tools, but, you know, I think one of the things um, is meditation, mm -hmm. right? And being aware of what the messages are that are coming to you. Um, yeah. I've always been very intuitive and I've, I've known that my whole life and I really didn't understand the power of it 
until Mm -hmm. the last few years when I've really started to study it a lot more. But we do have a lot of different factors um, outside of our see, sight, hear, smell, and taste and touch, right? Mm -hmm. We have so much more within us as our intuitive factors. And so I want people to understand that a big piece of success in life as well as in business is listening to the intuitive voices that come to you or the ideas and then taking immediate action. Most yeah. people will listen and not take that action thinking, well, whatever. But when I recognize when my clients get an intuitive thought, when I get an intuitive thought and I just take action on it, it always turns out magnificently. <laughs> and yes. it could be as simple as me sitting at home and saying, I think I, I told you that when I, when you reached out to me on email about a month ago and I said, I just started thinking, oh, geez, I haven't talked to Dana in a while. And boom, there's an email. That's how amazing the yeah. energy works, the frequency. Yeah. I'm on the same frequency. I send my energy to Dana. She yeah. responds. And it happens yeah. like this all the time for me because I, I purposely put that energy out. And I know yeah. who I want to connect with. They connect with me. And it, it's yeah. just a beautiful rhythm that you can get into. And yeah. that's a simple one to test. Right, yeah. because we can think of somebody across the globe, and they will connect with us and say, "Hey, yeah. I haven't heard from you," or "I was just thinking about you." How many times have we heard yeah. that? "I was just yeah. thinking about you." We do it, exactly. but we don't recognize well, it. Well, and we're all in the, in the fact of the matter is we're all interconnected. We we don't see, seem to see that most of the time. We see ourselves as separate countries, separate nations, separate in our country, separate political parties we see such separation and division but we're actually all interconnected energetically and albert einstein says that it's it's a delusion to think we're separate and that Hmm. he says we need to expand our care to all uh, our love and care and compassion to all living creatures Hmm. all over the world because we're all part of one Mm -hmm. and it, it's so true and and i don't say this to i'm going to be a lot more expansive on this uh, uh, project illumination than I am just in my business audiences but I have followed inner guidance for all my mm-hmm. life but most dramatically starting in 2000 um, exactly 2000 January I start really receiving information and like downloads every mm-hmm. night about information to share in a book and I believe we all have that ability we're just not open to it or we think it sounds woo woo or we think it's um, strange, but some of the most gifted people in the world describe it that way as things mm-hmm. coming to artists, singers, you know, the um, creative people say they yes. don't know where it came from. It just came to them. And I I just want, and I'm sure that's what you're saying too. We want to spark that in everybody, that knowledge. Don't just be so head down trying to stay safe, worrying and and not living your life. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, they've done so many surveys about people at the end of their life. You can't take all the things with you. The really mm-hmm. what matters are relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, I have I've seen a lot of conflict going on, not only in our country, but even between family members and yeah. people that can't get along and i have some theories about um or not even theories i i see clearly what goes on it's just when you're in it it's hard not to get out of it Mm -hmm. but i see a constant blame and then be a victim and blame and be a victim do you have any ideas of uh or you and i'll share what i do too but you tell me what what you tell your clients when they are sure that one person is the problem or it's their mm-hmm. sister or it's you know the boss from hell how do you deal with <laughs> when other we all have those haven't we <laughs> yeah yes gallup and, and said, we will continue to have those we will yes, continue and gallup to poll said, said yeah. the gallup poll said the boss from hell is the main reason people leave a job it's not the whole company often it's the direct supervisor but tell me what how do you recommend dealing with those kind of well there's a couple of things there first of all is recognizing the emotion that you're bringing forward based off of that relationship 
Because when you recognize that emotional behavior, it's triggering, right? That yeah. event triggered you to respond in a way that you've trained yourself to respond, yes. right? And so some people will withdraw, some people will yell, some people mm -hmm. will act out, some people will just disown, right? We do yeah. all of these things and do any of those serve? Not one of them, yes. right? So no. for me, it's about forgiveness because mm -hmm. that person is whoever we feel is causing us to have this anxiety or mm -hmm. whatever it may be at that moment it is in those moments that we can look at ourselves and say why am i responding this way and i just need to send forgiveness and love to the other person because they know only know how to act that way or to be that way and so right. if i'm not responding to them in a way that's fearful or angry or judgmental and I am able to give that forgiveness mm -hmm. at that moment and just send them that light and love, mm -hmm. then I'm protecting myself from that experience um, of going into my m triggering emotional behavior. Mm -hmm. And I'm also opening it up to healing for that other yeah. person, right? Yeah. And I think that's one of the main things mm -hmm. that I would say um, for most people in that type of situation that you do that. And the other thing is sometimes we end up in conversations that just don't feel right or we don't want to be dragged into them. And I learned this from one of my mentors, Bob Proctor, and he said, just say that's interesting and okay. change the subject. You yes. don't have to be pulled into any negative conversations or anything that's right. making you feel uncomfortable. Use that yeah. word. That's interesting because you're validating they had an opinion yeah. and then change the subject. And it yes. works like a charm. Yes. Have you um, <laughs> and, and I'm in totally ag agreement with you. I have a specific little um, list of things I have people think about when it happens, because not only is it uncomfortable um, when we're triggered, it's it, what we don't realize is it's fear. Even if mm -hmm. we are angry underneath that is fear. So mm -hmm. um, I think I, I call it facing the enemy. Mm -hmm. Because in your mind at that moment, that person has become the enemy and mm -hmm. they are triggering some response. In fact, I can ask an audience to think of the most recent conflict they have. And I can say this to this audience just listening today. Think of the most recent conflict that you've had. And then I want you to remember really clearly how it feels and how did it feel at that moment? And they always come up to the right, with the right one because that's the one that's sticking in their mind. Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, why? what am I really afraid of? And no matter how I'm reacting, even if I'm, you know, just annoyed or if I'm attacking or if I'm running away, you know, the fight, mm -hmm. flight, whatever it is, what am I really feeling? What am I really afraid of? What am I afraid this says about me? What am mm -hmm. I afraid? Because really what we're doing is we're trying to aim back at the person. We're deflecting. And we're trying to make them wrong and ourselves right, which is what the ego wants. But it's just the self-protection. And then my the second part is the next time you're in that environment where something triggers you, the very first thing, and you said it, is pause. Don't just immediately react because a reaction is giving away all your power. Mm -hmm. When you react, you're no longer responding, you're reacting. Yeah. So they're pulling your chain. Yeah. You're a puppet. And mm -hmm. then think of something really calming for yourself because ultimately we want to get to forgiveness, but it, it doesn't just go, oh, bang, I forgive you. If we can start to see that that other person is just following their script yeah. and they're saying based on their past experience, what's true for them. Mm -hmm. They're not really trying to hurt me. In fact, it's not even about me. Mm -hmm. It's about them. Just like my story is about me. And when you can start to see that, then you can let the, the it can reduce that grip on you. But it mm -hmm. also can show us what we're afraid of. Yeah. Because if we're really afraid of something in there, that's where we can do some work to get mm -hmm. regain our worth. Yeah. And so at the end, we can tell, talk to somebody calmly. Oftentimes we need to talk later or maybe never, mm -hmm. but 
we don't have to go into that reactionary mode that is harmful for them and you, and also ends up causing a bigger block that you can't get around. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I discovered that forgiveness is one of the most wonderful things we can offer somebody else, but I also believe it has to start with self-forgiveness. Yes. Do you have any thoughts about that? Do you ever yeah. talk about self-forgiveness? Yeah, absolutely. Because oftentimes we get so tied up in blame, blaming everybody, but it's really how we're reacting to it. So mm -hmm. we've come from a point where we may have been um, responding to something back when we were five, when we had no logical right. thought patterns. And we feel that same emotion come up as an adult. Mm -hmm. We don't really recognize that it was from when we were five, but that a same response from somebody creates that same internal disruption, I'll call it, <laughs> or yes. fear or worry or, you know, anger. Um, and so once we start to see, oh, Jesus, this feeling is what I'm really reacting to, how it makes me feel when somebody speaks to me that way, how it makes me feel when somebody does this to me, that it, it's the feeling that is coming back from that childhood. Yes. And it's, it's allowing us to just respond the way we've been responding for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And when you recognize that and you say, oh, this is where it stems from. So why am I still acting that same, same way? right? It may have been, let's just, I'm going to give an example. So you're seven years old and you're in grade one and your name is Johnny and you're looking out the window because you're fantasizing and you're thinking about something that you're creative, your creative mind is going like crazy. And the teacher gets to say, well, Johnny, pay attention, quit daydreaming, right? So now Johnny's told that it's a bad thing to use his imagination. Yes. So now every time you come up with an idea and somebody challenges it as an adult, you feel like you're back in that classroom. That same emotion comes forward. Yes. And it's that recognition over time of, oh, is it that reaction that I'm having that's causing that? Because I am creative and I do get to, as an adult, rewrite that story and say, I am the most creative person there ever is. Yes. And I just love daydreaming and thinking about ideas of how I could make XYZ better, how yeah. I could create this in, in life for other people to benefit. Yeah. And rewriting that story, once you recognize where it stems from, is to me when you get that freedom. Yeah. yeah. And so as we learn to forgive ourselves and see those are just things that we learned and, and we did the best we could at that time and we can give mm. up some of the guilt that most of us go around carrying and yeah. forgive ourselves, then it's much easier to look out and extend that same forgiveness mm -hmm. for others. Because I believe the golden rule is actually, you can't help but follow the golden rule in this respect. If you are feeling bad about yourself, you tend to project that out. Mm -hmm. You're blaming yourself all the time. You're feeling lack of self-worth and you feel that you're, uh, you're hiding things mm -hmm. that you wouldn't want people to know about you, your shadow, you will project it onto others. And the more you are accepting and loving of yourself, the more mm -hmm. you can share that acceptance and loving and forgiveness mm -hmm. with others. So um, I think those are all great topics that work in the workplace, that work in families, that mm -hmm. work. Wouldn't it be nice if the whole world could start to understand that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing. I think there is a big shift that's happening now. Because I think we've gone through so much in the last five or so years that's completely disrupted our norm. And we're having to adjust. We're having to grow. We're having to adjust to the new norm. Yes. And we also have so much access to social media today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I once heard Deepak Chopra, somebody asked him, say, and said, so do you listen to the news? And he said, I used to listen to the news but I don't anymore because it's someone else's opinion. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was brilliant because the news has definitely become someone else's opinion yes. today. It yes. is not the news as we grew up with in our generation. Yes. Um, it's definitely something that I think 
we have to put on our blinders to mm -hmm. really think about what is it that we're choosing to engage in mm -hmm. and what is it that we choose not to engage in that can help right. us sit with our growth. Because at the end yeah. of the day, life is about growth. Life is about yeah. being able to give back in a way that you feel is serving others in a way that's probably impactful and makes a difference in someone else's life. And until we're actually able to embrace that as a, an individual, we won't be able to get past all that noise that's out there right now. And there's yeah. a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise out there, out there right now. And we can now. find an opinion that matches our opinion on anything, right? We could go on and search whatever we want yes. and we'll find that opinion. Exactly. But is it an opinion right. that's serving you? Yeah. Is it an opinion that's serving your community, humanity, the globe, the future of this yeah. planet, the future of our children and grandchildren, yeah. the future yeah. of our economy? Right. And we want to be a voice of the of the truth and the voice of um, reason and the voice of love and the voice of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And we need to stand for that. And we don't want to participate in this ongoing conflict that's really so polarized now. And so I agree with you. I think there is a shift happening right now and I believe things are going to get better. And they just, um, I also believe that a lot of what's been happening is part of an exposure because you can't change things that were hidden and yeah. they're coming up now to be seen and giving us a chance to choose differently and choose a better mm -hmm. world. So Sally, I'm, I'm really so appreciative of you being on here and sharing your thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. How can people tell, learn more about you? I'm going to put your links on, but you have some sure. ways to tell people to connect with you. Okay. Yeah, I'm most active on LinkedIn and they can just mm -hmm. use my name as it's showing on the screen here, Sally Arkell Bowles. Yeah. Um, that's the easiest way to find me. That's my website's name. So you can look up Sally Arkell Bowles there. I okay. am on Instagram and Facebook as well, but those other ones, LinkedIn um, and my website are the best ways to connect. Yeah. Uh, I do offer, you know, a complimentary conversation with people that are interested in finding out more about whether we would be a good fit to work together or speaking engagements yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, I have a newsletter that I produce through my LinkedIn so if you're interested in finding mm -hmm. out more about how mindset and business and, and personal lives work together, that would be a really great tool for anybody to go and access right away. And I'm also That's going to be right. leading a summit in October. Um, and so just keep an eye on my LinkedIn for the updates on that. So I have a summit of a number of coaches that are getting together in all different areas of business as well as life so that we can share more of this wisdom with others. Oh, that's wonderful. And I see more and more groups coming together and individuals forming groups mm -hmm. that are doing this. And that's how we're going to change the world Absolutely. as we come together and help one another. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Sally. And we'll talk soon. Thank you, Dana. It's been uh -huh. very nice. Okay. Bye. Bye.